Here at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, community members strive to live sustainably, and this plays into all aspects of daily living, including diet, energy consumption, and housing. Members build their own homes from sustainable and natural resources, including straw bales, cob, and reclaimed, recycled lumber. Now we're here to show you one of these natural building designs, Larkspur, home to Tony and Alyssa. Hi, I'm Tony. And I'm Alyssa. And welcome to our home, Larkspur. <laughs> Alyssa and I broke ground for the concrete piers that make up the foundation on July the 31st of last year. So it's been a little over a year and uh, while the interior is almost fully complete, the exterior still has a little bit of work to do, but uh, we're glad to show you around. Okay, so here we are up close and personal with one of the nine concrete piers that make up the foundation of our home Larkspur. And the reason that Alyssa and I opted for a concrete pier foundation was that quite frankly, uh, we didn't have any idea how to do anything else. And this is a quick method and it made sense to us. Um, other potential benefits are that it's very uh, light on the land, not very invasive. We only dug nine holes for the foundation of our house. Um, and it happened very quickly. Within two weeks of getting the post hole digger out, we had a platform on which we could start framing our walls. So Alyssa and I chose the color blue for our metal roofing because it was the, the nicest color we could find. Uh, and we chose metal because uh, our future plans are to incorporate a rainwater catchment system onto the house. Uh, and the way that that'll work is we'll just simply attach some gutters and uh, some downspouts that we'll uh, collect here into rain barrels that we can then use uh, gravity fed pressure to uh, water our garden with. Hi and welcome to the inside of our house. Our house is about 400 square feet total with a downstairs and an upstairs. The downstairs is our primary living space where we hang out and read and do whatever we want. We're planning on having a baby in this space. Um, and upstairs is our bedroom and we chose to have two separate floors so that people wouldn't walk in and instantly see our bed. Our bedroom would be separate from the main living space. Uh, we heat our house with the wood burning stove that we have in the north corner of our house. Let's show you the rest of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Up here we have what's called a truth window where you can see the inside of our house, what it looks like, um, what the construction process entailed. And up there you see the stick framing members, the two by sixes, or these are actually two by fours. Um, as well as a diagonal brace to keep the wall square mm -hmm. and straight, and the insulation, which is made out of light clay straw, which is a technique that mixes straw with a very light clay slip, and the straw acts as the insulation, and the clay helps with fire resistance and insect repellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... We I don't know what else well, about it. The way that light clay straw works is that by attaching a form on the inside and the outside of the framing members, we're able to then shove in the loose straw uh, to fill that cavity. And then as it dries, you pull off the forms, move them up the wall, and do the next course. And so, yeah, here you get a good view of, uh, of what that looks like before we put the plaster. And the reason that we left it open and uh, covered with plexiglass is that in, in, it's a tradition in natural building to, uh, to, to have a, include a truth window where you can show exactly what the insulation is of your house. So this really is made out of straw. <laughs> So on top of the insulation, the light clay straw insulation, we then coat the walls with plaster. And we use two different coats of plaster. And here on this wall, you can see both types of plaster. Up at the top, we still have just our first coat of plaster, which is a rough coat, which is made of clay, straw, and sand. Um, a lot of the materials, or all of the materials, we got locally. Uh, the clay, some of it was what we dug out of the ground when we put when we dug for our foundation. Some of it was given to us from Luke Zimmerman down the road when he scraped the clay out of his pond. The straw was straw that we bought from a local guy down in Memphis and somewhere else. 
Um, and that's the first coat. The second coat is made of more fi much more finer materials. We sift the sand to get it really fine. We sift the clay. Um, and then we also add cattail fluff, which we take from the cattails that grow at the pond right next door, and wheat paste, which is basically just heated flour and water. And put it on with a trowel, and it makes this really nice, smooth coating. And also, as we're doing the earth and plaster, uh, applying it wet, uh, it allows you to uh, manipulate that surface, uh, like we said, with uh, the trowels and with the uh, burnishers to make it smooth. But you can also incorporate other materials. So if we step over here, you can see where we incorporated some seashells and some polished glass into a mosaic. Um, and this is just to add a little bit of visual interest and take advantage of that uh, workability with the, the product, or the, the material, the earth and plaster. But also an important uh, aspect of this design was that the, uh, the mosaic sort of rises up into this opening, which uh, connects the two spaces we, we felt. And uh, I think it does a pretty good job of that, too. So one of the covenants here at Dancing Rabbit is that all of our buildings, uh, have the wood that's used in our building has to be either sustainably and locally harvested or reclaimed. And so naturally all of the wood here in Larkspur has been sustainably locally harvested or uh, the majority has been reclaimed. So uh, looking around, let's see, uh, the floor came from the Smith House, which is a a demolition project that I took part in just a couple miles down the road. The finished ceiling here came from uh, the Kirkpatrick farmhouse which I took apart last summer. Um, also the uh, the majority of the two by sixes and even these two by eights that make up the the floor joists for the second story also from the the uh, Kirkpatrick farmhouse. Um, you see here the the window trim and uh, these nailer strips uh, along the, the top of the wall, these are made out of honey locust, which is actually something of a, a pest tree in this area, but uh, is milled up uh, beautifully. And we were fortunate enough to work with a, a local mill where um, this, these trees were actually harvested from land maybe five miles from here. And uh, we used it as sort of an accent to, uh, to really set the house apart. So we did wire Larkspur for electricity, as you see here. Uh, however, we don't have our own power system. We're members of Ironweed sub-community uh, here at Dancing Rabbit, and we are also part of, as Ironweed, uh, a power cooperative, if you will. And there are eight solar panels and a 1,000 watt wind turbine that make up the, the system. And that is currently housed in a couple of different locations. Uh, and we ran a, a wire from Ted and Sarah's house to the junction box here at Larkspur and uh, provides us with electricity enough to play the stereo or lights, uh, occasionally watch a DVD. Welcome to the second story of our house. This is our cozy bedroom, uh, pretty much where we sleep. And the design is fairly similar to downstairs, but a little bit different. Yeah, while well, the downstairs footprint is about 16 feet by 16 feet square, we, uh, we only have half of that space for the second story. Uh, so about 8 by 13 when you allow for the space that the stairs take up. Um, and also you notice that one of the things that makes this place so cozy is the, the, the short ceiling height. Uh, and the reason that we ended up with uh, such a design is is uh, sort of relates to the reclaimed material. We uh, we didn't have enough two by sixes to have eight foot walls on the second story, but we did have enough twelve foot two by sixes that we could cut in half. So we ended up with side walls that are a little over five and a half feet high, and then to allow for headroom, we built scissor trusses that uh, offer this cathedral ceiling, uh, and that way. We, have, we both have room to stand up and, you know, put a shirt on without hitting our head on the wall or the floor or the ceiling. Why would you hit your head on the floor and put a shirt on? I don't know. <laughs> but it could happen. <laughs> um, one of the great benefits about natural building is that the space just really feels good. Uh, you know, the, the materials are all natural and... 
you know, you're not worrying about chemicals and off-gassing and uh, artificiality even. Uh, so in addition to just the, the beautiful warmth and feel of the materials, uh, knowing that you've created a space using your own two hands or uh, in the case of community, the hands of as many people as you could possibly get to come over, um, it, it's incredibly rewarding. And often you will find Alyssa and I in this very spot, in this very spot sitting, uh, looking at our beautiful house. <laughs> and, Staring at our walls. Yeah, it's like, wow, that's nice plaster. Oh, what about that woodwork? <laughs> But uh, thanks so much for stopping by, really.